Hey everybody, welcome again. Today we're looking at the backside of my Rogers 725B built in 1979. And we're going to take a look at the technology of that day and how electronic organs were built. So, like all electronic organs of that period, we start with oscillators to generate the tone and then we go through some kind of filter to refine that tone into the various sounds in an effort to try and imitate the sounds of a pipe organ. So, if you've seen some of my other videos, you maybe have seen the videos about the Schober organ, which is typical of most home organs of the 1970s, which used a single oscillator and a divider network to generate the 97 musical pitches that were necessary to build the organ off of. Rogers is just a little more sophisticated because this is intended to be a professional organ for a church or college or a professional musician to practice on. So we have 97 individual tunable oscillators on these two panels here. And if we look at them, there's two different types of oscillators. There is an RC type oscillator and there is an LC type oscillator. The LC type oscillators use these induction coils as the control for the oscillation. The RC oscillators use uh, just a, a variable resistance as the control for the oscillator speed. The RC oscillators are on the bottom 24 notes. Uh, Rogers didn't feel that these were really as good as uh, the uh, LC oscillators. However, when you start building or the LC oscillators down in these lower pitches, those induction coils get bigger and bigger and bigger. They take up a lot of space. And so this was uh, after they had refined their RC oscillators enough, they felt that they could put them at least on the first 24 pitches and that it would be just fine. And, I mean, you got to listen really hard to hear any darn difference in them. So they all sound really good. This organ has a second bank of oscillators for the Celeste. On pipe organs, you usually had a soft accompaniment stop that consisted of two ranks of pipes matched to the same tone, but one was tuned just slightly sharp on purpose so that you had this nice, gentle, warm undulation in the sound. And that's what the second bank of uh, oscillators is about here. Once we have our pitches generated from the oscillators, then we have to get them over to the filter circuits and from there out to the amplifier. And so that's achieved on this organ. Our keying circuits are here and this routes the keyboard data as it were, the uh, DC signals that I'm inputting on the keyboard, over to the various filter cards. We have several of them on the Rogers each with an individual keying and filter circuit for every note of that voice. We start down here on the bottom, we have our Cremorne, which is a soft reed tone. We have our Diapason Celeste, our Flute Celeste. Over here we have our Main Flute and Diapason. Then we have our percussion sounds, our Harp and our Carillon. Carillon kind of like a chime setup. And then over here we have our Chiff and our trumpet. The chiff is meant to simulate that first little pop that an organ pipe makes when it's first the valve first opens and it first speaks. It, as it's pressurizing with air, for just a brief second it wants to speak a higher pitch. And that comes in as kind of a little percussive tunk. And that's on the front end of the sound. And so to more carefully imitate pipe organ sounds, we have the chiff generator and then that sound is meshed with the sound of the flute and it's it's really a pretty realistic effect. After we've generated our tone, we've put it through the filters, we've keyed it, uh, then all of that has to come over here to our preamp and uh, mixer circuit and we have several things here. We have the uh, voice shaping for the uh, Cremorne we have our input and our outputs. These switches uh, configure the audio system to either be two channel, three channel, or four channel. 
This is our tremolo adjusts. We have a normal tremolo and then a full tremolo for more of a theater organ kind of sound. This organ has a built-in uh, chorus device that's adjustable here. And then this little knob is the expression module. This is controlled by the expression shoe that I control with my foot. And that just takes the organ's volume up and down. And over here we have our reverb tank. And guitar guys will recognize this. This is a spring reverb tank. And uh, when you need a spring reverb, you need a spring reverb. But in the context of a classic organ, a spring reverb is kind of hokey. So since the board uses this effects loop to run the, the spring reverb tank, I'm going to use this to route some digital modern uh, effects devices and get a much nicer reverb and do some other things as well. And we'll have some videos in the future about all of that. So there's our tone generating system and as you can see it's fairly elaborate on a Rogers organ. Now if we open this up, we can take a look inside the console. So here we have our internal speaker system. We have two channels, bass, mid-range, treble. We have three-way passive crossovers so that the frequencies are divided appropriately among the speakers. Down here we have our power supply and our internal amplifier. The internal amplifier can run either the uh, internal speakers or a small set of external speakers, or both, depending on what you need to do. So that's the guts of a Rogers 725B. Next video I'm going to make on this organ, we're going to take a look at how I'm repairing the keyboards, and you can look forward to that in a few days. And thanks for watching, and please subscribe to my channel.